Welcome to Sculpture Studios. A little resurrection project here, hence the significantly more blurry, non-HD footage from our old camera. Basically, this is a reconstruction from an old video that was originally posted in 2014. Now, some of you may have got the chance to watch this, but six years later, the music in the video suddenly flagged up as being copyrighted, and therefore rendering the video non-playable worldwide. Come on, learn non-copyright music. It's a shame for a popular video that had over 50,000 views, but let's see if we can get this revamp back up there. After seeing a rock ramp on the internet that we made for Mercedes-Benz World back in 2011, Patrick Maloney has contacted our studio regarding a similar sculpture that he wanted made for an exhibition. He sent us images of the vehicle the scenery was designed for, and said he wanted a scenic surround carved from polystyrene, only this time, instead of rock, he wanted the set to resemble ice. With the dimensions sent, Aidan drew some sketches of how the whole thing might look, and a plan view showing the internal and external measurements. In order to get this project underway, as we only had a two week deadline, we got straight on with blocking out the surround with large billets of polystyrene and cutting the basic rudimentary shapes from the top. Once we get a real sense of the size and scale all fully mapped out in the studio, Aidan uses a hot wire and takes the polystyrene off quickly. He wants to create a variety of flat points and crevices, glacial shards and areas that look like snowdrift to make the piece varied and interesting to look at. There's always a lot of waste material when carving from polystyrene, but it's a great medium to get these kinds of forms quickly. For us, it's the most practical and efficient method of creating a sculpture like this, without actually having to go down the route of needing to buy huge blocks of ice or rock. Aidan's now going over with wire brushes to further hone down the shape to the look he's after. This is all handheld and hand carved, so not only does it save the client considerable costs on any computerized 3D rendering and machine fabrication, but it's also a great workout as well. Once Aiden's happy with the form and everything's been sanded down, we send Patrick an update so he can see the set in its raw polystyrene state. We send photographs and ask for feedback at this point, as it's still at a stage where any changes can still be made relatively easily. Once everything's final and the designs are confirmed, we start applying a spray-on concrete render. This coats the polystyrene and gives it a more durable shell, and unlike resin, it doesn't corrode or burn through the material, so we can apply this straight on top without needing to add a protective layer. This is more for aesthetics as opposed to strength, and if we wanted to make this a permanent installation, we would have to go down a glass fibre route, but for the purpose of this being outside for only a few days, a concrete render as a thin coat will be acceptable. As the concrete naturally gives a rough texture, areas are then smoothened down while the concrete's still wet, to keep the flats and the points that were initially created. We also make sure that all the seam lines in the polystyrene are filled to make sure that it looks like a single piece, except for the areas that break down for transportation. When all the concrete's dry, we reassemble the complete unit to make sure everything fits together nicely and the internal measurements are still accurate to the drawings. We need to make sure that not only is everything finished and that no pieces have gone astray, but that the vehicle at the other end will fit perfectly inside the perimeter. Once these final checks are in place, you know what time it is, it's time to celebrate in style! With the majority of the construction work now complete, the sculptures need to be prepared for artworking. We go over everything once more, sanding down areas that might be rough to the touch, so that not only is this safe for us to handle for transportation, but it's also safe for wandering hands of the public. All the pieces are given two layers of a white obliteration paint, and the ice is then accentuated with an airbrush of blue for a theatrical paint look finish. Here you can see a flat we've created on the very front of the set for a plaque to be installed once the sculpture gets to site. With all the paint now dry, we go on with a spray on lacquer to protect the colour 
and to just seal the material generally. And this is just in case it happens to rain over the two or three days that this is going to be on location. With this lacquer freshly applied, we go over with a sprinkling of glitter and this just adds another dimension to the ice and brings out that frosty twinkle in the light. We were careful not to go too overboard or too Disney on this, but it's these small touches that we think makes all the difference between a block of polystyrene and bringing the sculpture to life. We were extremely careful when loading this onto the truck, as it's only polystyrene after all, which is a relatively delicate material when it's knocked around too much. It just about fit onto an 18 ton lorry, and we packed it in in such a way that hopefully it wouldn't rock around too much during transit, and the pieces shouldn't rub against each other. A day before the event, we drove up to Manchester, and into a quarry exhibition area for large machinery and industrial diggers. We unloaded the set on location, and for all the best will in the world of people trying to help, sometimes it's just safer for us to handle it, as we know the nature of the material and where the strong and weak points are. We designed the segments to split into manageable sized pieces, and with this being relatively lightweight, this meant that only two of our team needed to travel to Manchester, and we could set it up between us. When we met Patrick on location for the first time, he mentioned that his company might want to relocate the sculpture after the initial exhibition and use it again at a permanent venue. This means we need to make sure that we're extra careful when putting it together so that it could be moved again without too much damage. Patrick explained that rather than just placing this vehicle on the ground amongst hundreds of similar machines all brand new, they really wanted to show off the wear and tear and the purpose this vehicle was adapted for. This ventured across the Antarctic and back again against the extreme elements and they wanted something theatrical to dress it with to make it stand out. After meeting one of the actual explorers on site, we learned that this machine was a twin to just one other vehicle that expeditioned across the Antarctic during the winter weather and they'll be returning for another crusade. We hope the exhibition with our set went well, and that their next chilly expedition is safe and prosperous, and we'd like to thank Patrick from Connect for coming to us with this project. We look forward to many more to come. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook, and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.